The top stories tonight in Y News. The Philippines records more than 3,000 new COVID-19 cases for the first time in nearly five months. The government to conduct simultaneous rollout of Sinovac and AstraZeneca vaccines to health workers. Thousands of residents were evacuated after three powerful earthquake strike off New Zealand. And the world's first hotel in space is set to begin its construction. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, March 5, 2021. I am Horilin Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, vaccine czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. said that the Philippines must use up all the first batch of AstraZeneca vaccines to get more shipments from the COVAX facility. Meanwhile, the government is rushing the deployment of the Sinovac vaccines in the country. Wilson Equans explains why. The government plans to conduct a simultaneous rollout of the AstraZeneca and Sinovac vaccines following the arrival of 487,200 doses of AstraZeneca yesterday. According to Vaccine SAR and Chief Implementer of the National Task Force Against COVID-19, Secretary Carlito Galvez, once the priority list for the AstraZeneca vaccines is finalized by the Interim National Immunization Technical Advisory Group, the vaccines will be distributed and rolled out. The official also said that the first shipment of the AstraZeneca vaccines should be used up first to get the next supplies of vaccines from the COVAX facility. Sinabihan nga po ako ng uh, WHO na pagka hindi na ubus pa yan, hindi po datating ang second stance. Ah. So pagka po uh, nakita nila na ubus na ang uh, AstraZeneca, then second stance will come in. At nangako po sila na more or less at least uh, for this ano, second quarter, uh, first quarter, second quarter, 4.5 million po matatanggap po natin. Medical practitioners are recommending to allot the AstraZeneca vaccines for senior health workers. Meanwhile, the government said it targets to finish the deliveries of the Sinovac vaccines within 7 to 10 days. The donated 600,000 doses of Coronavac arrive in the country on February 28. Yung Sinovac, kailangan matatang po natin ang ano, yung, uh, deployment uh, this coming, ano, this coming uh, 7 to 10 days. Also, 1 million doses of Sinovac vaccines will be procured by the Philippines from China and are also expected to arrive within the month, while more supplies of COVID-19 vaccines are expected to arrive in the second quarter of 2021. Rosa Licos, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Food and Drug Administration advises the public to not fret the reported side effects of the Sinovac vaccines. According to the FDA, this is part of the normal process of immunization. Aiko Miguel explains why. Head and body ache. These are some of the mild to moderate side effects experienced by healthcare workers who were injected with the coronavac based on a report by the Food and Drug Administration. But FDA Director General Eric Domingo says only 1% of the vaccinated population have experienced these mild side effects. Mababa nga, no? uh, kasi usually up to 10-20% of people would get a reaction. No? Tayo, so far, ito nga wala pang 125 na reactions out of more than 13,000 na mga nabakunahan. So, ibig sabihin, karabihan sa kanila siguro kung meron man naramdaman, very mild na enough na masyadong mild na hindi man lang report uh, sa atin. So, napakababa naman ito. Three of them, however, experienced serious allergies but were immediately treated and cured according to the FDA. Pamamantal, kasama yon pamamantal at saka yung, uh, ibig sabihin, generalized siya, no? Uh, affected yung buong katawan at siguro nag-take precaution lang na para hindi sila mahirapan huminga kasi mga severe na allergy talaga alam naman natin yung anaphylactic shock 
nagkakaroon ng problems with breathing. No? So, inadmit yung dalawa para magamot. Yung isa, parang naggamot siya ng sarili niya. At napakaganda pa rin naman no? ng ating mga ads of getting the benefit over the risk ng ating bakuna. Few days after being inoculated with the first dose, a vaccine will develop antibodies against the virus. The body will also be more responsive and will manifest more side effects once the second dose is administered because of immune reaction. A vaccine may be feverish or have body aches, but this will be mild and should not be something to be afraid of. Since meron ka ng konting antibodies at that time, yung mamamount mo ngayon na immune response mas malakas, mas ano na siya, mas responsive ka na at mas mabilis kang magre-respond ngayon yung, immu- yung iyong uh, immune system. Kaya din naman, mas marami rin usually nararamdaman. Kasi para kang nagkakaroon ng sakit na mild eh, at yung katawan mo ay nagre-respond to the new infection. The Food and Drug Administration and the Department of Health continuously monitor adverse events following the immunization. Once the FDA records severe side effects or severe conditions due to the vaccines, FDA will halt its use in the country. According to DG Domingo, he did not experience any side effects after receiving the Sinovac vaccine and he is ready to be inoculated with a second dose three weeks after his inoculation. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, the Philippines' single-day tally of coronavirus disease cases jumped again to 3,000. The Department of Health reported today 3,045 additional cases of COVID-19 nationwide, raising the total number to 587,704. The last time that the Philippines logged more than 3,000 cases in a day was on October 16, 2020, with 3,139 reported COVID-19 cases at the time. The DOH said 40,074 are active cases or those who are still sick. This is 6.8% of the total case count. Of these cases, 89.7% have mild symptoms, 5.6% have no symptoms, 2% are in critical condition, 1.9% are in severe condition, and 0.77% are in moderate condition. It was also noted that the death count increased to 12,423 after 19 more patients died because of the disease. Meanwhile, 178 more patients have recovered, bringing the total recovery count to 535,207. The Okta Research Group warned that COVID-19 cases in Metro Manila could balloon to 2,000 daily by the end of the month if the variants that reach the country are not contained immediately. Aiko Miguel explains why. Based on Okta Research Team's report, there are 900 average cases recorded daily in Metro Manila from February 26 to March 4. This is 50% higher compared to the previous week. The group believes that the possible case surge in NCR is brought by the existence of COVID-19 variants in the country. Okta Research Fellow Professor Guido David says it is alarming once B.1.351 COVID-19 variant transmission is not prevented. With this, cases may reach to over 2,000 cases daily in NCR. So if this, this trend continues, we'll be at around 2,200 cases per day before the end of the month. And that is a, an alarming number because uh, right now we've already reached um, or exceeded uh, August levels for Pasay, but if we reach 2,000, uh, more than 2,000 cases per day, uh, we already re- then we would have already reached the uh, levels of NCR during the uh, August surge. So uh, definitely this is very concerning Cases may be prevented to surge if localized lockdown is implemented in areas with prominent cases. If this measure is implemented, the reproduction number in the country may go down to 1.2 from 1.47. Meanwhile, Okta Research Team clarifies they are in favor of AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines inoculation in the Philippines. This after an Okta fellow said the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine's efficacy is only at 10% against the B.1.351 COVID-19 variant. We maintain no, our position no, that we support the government program 
There's no conflict of interest as far as Okta is concerned. So what we are encouraging people, in fact, is to get themselves vaccinated because we believe that the best vaccine available, the, the best vaccine is the vaccine that's available. And that for the, for the moment is AstraZeneca and Sinovac. I, Pumigel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Interagency Task Force clarified today that local government units may still impose saliva-based COVID-19 tests as a pre-travel requirement. Joan Nano will tell us why. To avoid confusions and to ease the process for domestic travel as border restrictions are still being imposed in some provinces, the Interagency Task Force clarifies that saliva-based COVID-19 testing of the Philippine Red Cross can still be used by the local government units for pre-travel requirements. This is apart from the standard RT-PCR or swab testing as saliva testing of the PRC is much cheaper and was accredited by the IATF. Para mariwanag, yan po. Para wala na yung iba-ibang testing. Basta kung kailangan ng testing, it is RT-PCR before the travel. Pero pwede po sa live test ng Red Cross. Secretary Nograles further explains that COVID-19 testing is no longer a mandatory travel requirement except if the LGUs will require it. Okay, ang general rule is no testing required except if required if, if kailangan ng LGU. So it's really up to the LGU. So ibig po sabihin, pag sinabi ng LGU na kailangan pa rin, um, then it has to be RT-PCR. Wala na iba. On the other hand, the IATF official also said the travelers do not need to submit themselves to mandatory quarantine or isolation except if they manifested COVID-19 symptoms upon arrival to their destination. Ang pinakiusap namin sa mga LGUs, Wala ng quarantine kasi um, nagkakaroon din ng problema sa quarantine. Ika-quarantine lang po kung upon symptoms check ay makikita po na meron siyang symptoms. Currently, the Department of the Interior and Local Government is coordinating with the LGUs on the integration of Stay Safe and S-Pass for the easy access of QR codes to be used for contact tracing among travelers. Joa Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Puerto Princesa City reopens its gate for local tourism. And for safe travel, the local government unit may require more than one COVID-19 test from tourists. Asher Kadapan Jr. details why. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Tromolopuyat explains that travel requirements were streamlined for the convenience of domestic tourists, but it will still be up to the local government units if they would require a negative COVID-19 test result. Wala na yung quarantine, except syempre kung may sintomas, kung inuubo naman, alangan naman, hindi mo ika-quarantine. Pero yung test, yung, yung bago ka makapunta sa isang lugar, Wala na yung may PNP, may barangay. Oo, ang hiningi ko lang talaga para respeto sa LGU, yung kung hingi ng LGU test before travel. As Puerto Princesa City reopens for domestic tourism, they also require tourists to present a negative reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction or RT-PCR test 48 hours before their travel date. But for a safer travel, the tourists will need to undergo COVID-19 testing should they opt to stay in the city for several more days. Meron pa rin po tayong antigen testing na nire-require every third day and seventh day ng stay nila dito. Um, and uh, bukod po sa yung in-place na po na ating protocols, uh, karagdagan lang po on monitoring and tracking of our guests. League of Provinces of the Philippines President and Marinduque Governor Presbytero Velasco Jr. also explained that most provincial heads as well as LGUs prefer to require travelers from other places to undergo COVID-19 testing, like in Boracay Island where it is still required, along with the new travel protocols set by the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases. Meanwhile, Secretary Romulo Puyat assures the tourism workers, particularly those working in quarantine hotels, that they will also be prioritized in the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Kasama namin si PRD at si Secretary Galvez, hiningi namin na pwede ba basta turismo unahin na sa vaccination. Mo naman, uunahin na lang daw yung 
health workers, tama naman, health workers, at yung elderly. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. The strongest earthquakes to hit the South Pacific in modern history triggered tsunami warnings and forced thousands of people in New Zealand to evacuate coastal areas. From New Zealand, Paul Gatchalian will give us the details live. Uh, yes, uh, Paul, uh, how is the situation over there? Well, William, thousands of residents here in New Zealand have returned home after being evacuated from coastal areas in the wake of a powerful 8.1 magnitude earthquake and tsunami warning. A tsunami alert warning and tsunami siren was heard across the entire island region after a strong earthquake that hit Kermatic Islands, which is located 800 kilometers north of New Zealand and within close vicinity to North Island, New Zealand. The first magnitude 7.1 earthquake struck at 2.27 a.m. followed by a magnitude 7.4 at 6.41 a.m. and a third quake with an 8.1 magnitude at 8.28 a.m. It was reported that more than 50,000 people across the country felt the initial shaking. Most of the residents that were asked to evacuate are in the areas of Northland, Bay of Plenty and Great Barrier Islands in preparation of the anticipated surges which were expected to be as high as 1.1 to 3 meters. At 1.25 p.m. local time, the National Emergency Management Agency reported that the largest wave has passed and has advised the public to return to their homes right before 3 o'clock p.m. while downgrading the tsunami warning as well. The Philippine Embassy has also advised the Filipinos living in near coast from the Bay of Islands to Pangare, from Matata to Tulaga Bay, and Great Barrier Islands to move while some of the Filipino residents who experienced the earthquake felt terrified. I usually wake up at night a few times going to the toilet but at that time I don't know I just woke up suddenly and then um, the whole place is shaking and um, I'm so scared that I can't get up in, a, in, a, in my bed. William at the moment there have been no reports of Filipinos or any local for that matter suffering from injury, death, or damaged property from this incident. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you and be safe, Paul. A fishers group is asking for government intervention in a form of price control over skyrocketing prices of fish, particularly galunggong or round scad. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. Prices of galunggong or round scud now costs an average of 260 pesos per kilogram in the market. This is higher than the price of milk fish and tilapia. Fish vendors in Nepaqiu Mart, Quezon City, complain their low sales due to the high price of fish. Pagdating sa palengke, matumal, binaubos, kapag natiraan, ibibig na kinabukasan, yeluhan. Even in a restaurant we visited, there is no round scud on their menu. Sa sobrang mahal kasi ng presyo ng galunggong, hindi ko alam kung paano ibebenta. Eh kasi hindi afford ng mga tao. Dati kasi 35 lang bentahan ko. Pag nagtas ako, hindi na nila mag ano mabibili. Na pambansang lakas ng kilusang mamamalakaya ng Pilipinas or pamalakaya said that the government should impose a price ceiling for round scud. The Fishers Group suspects that there is a manipulation in prices to justify the importation. Hindi tumataas yung presyo dito sa pili ng farm gate na daily 60 pesos sa Palawan, ang pili yan sa kanila. Pero dito sa atin, sa National Capital Region ay tumataas. Kaya sobrang-sobrang pagsasamantala ito. According to the group, the government should also intervene on the shipment of the fish to make sure that it will be bought by consumers at a lower price. The Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, or BIFAR, said that even if the fishing ban was lifted in February, fish catch is still low due to the effect of the cold weather brought by the Northeast Monsoon. Malacanang guaranteed that the government, through the Department of Agriculture, is monitoring the prices of fish 
and fish products in the wet markets. The DA meanwhile offers consumers to buy other fish that are low in price. Kalilift lang po ng uh, close fishing season at papasok na po yung uh, imports ng uh, galumbong. Kung nasa 200 to 50 range po, uh, meron pong ibang klaseng isda, hindi lang po galumbong. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Bureau of Internal Revenue supports the key provisions in various Senate bills which seeks to legislate POGO taxes. According to a lawmaker, the government can collect up to 65 billion pesos worth of taxes from the industry. Arlene Delgado will tell us why. The Senate Committee on Ways and Means began its hearing on the proposed measures seeking to tax the POGO industry. The bills want to amend the National Internal Revenue Code to establish the tax regime of the industry. These include defining POGOs in the law, imposing 25% final withholding tax to its alien employees, and providing a 5% franchise tax on gross gaming receipts of all offshore gaming companies. According to the Bureau of Internal Revenue, its tax collections from POGOs have declined as many of them shut down their operations due to the pandemic. The temporary restraining order issued by the Supreme Court in January on the franchise tax is also a factor. In 2020, the BIR collected 7.1 billion pesos of taxes, which was higher than the taxes collected in 2019. However, this January, only 327 million pesos were collected by the Bureau, which was lower than the same month last year with 1 billion pesos. The BIR also noted that taxing foreign-based entities is also a major issue. The BIR cited a legal opinion from the Office of the Solicitor General in 2018, saying that POGO offshore-based licensees are not subject to tax pursuant to Section 23 of the Internal Revenue Code since it derived income from sources without the Philippines. The POGO offshore-based licensees claim that they are not required to register and pay taxes to the BIR if they are foreign registered entities not deriving income from the Philippines. Despite this, the BIR estimates that it could collect POGO taxes worth almost 4 billion pesos this year. But for Senate President Pro Tempore Ralph Recto, the government can actually collect 65 billion pesos of taxes from the POGO industry. 2% regulatory fee of 540 would be equivalent to 10.8 billion. The 5% franchise tax, which is suggested or in the law, and we are now putting it in the bill here, would have been 27 billion and the withholding tax from 183,000 employees would have been 27.5 billion for a total of 65 billion that's how huge the potential revenues are from this industry According to the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, or PAGCOR, which regulates POGOs, there are 38 POGO licensees operating in the country and two licensed POGO hubs. Jorge Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A group of lawyers told the Supreme Court to issue an order to temporarily stop the implementation of the reviled Anti-Terrorism Act amid the continuing attacks against its petitioners and their counsels. Dante Amento will tell us why. The National Union of People's Lawyer or NUPL disclosed that a total of 54 lawyers and judges were allegedly killed during the administration of President Rodrigo Duterte. The very recent was human rights and indigenous people's lawyer, Angelo Carlo Guillen, Council of Anti-Terrorism Law Petitioners, who was stabbed by two unidentified men on Wednesday night in Iloilo City. The Integrated Bar of the Philippines, or IBP, appeals to the Supreme Court to use its powers to protect them. Panawagan namin sa Supreme Court, eh, atasan naman yung mga pwes at yung DOJ naman, yung mga fiscal, na bilis-bilisan, i-prioritize naman yung mga kaso ng mga abogado. Attorney Ivalin Orsua denounced the president, who is also a lawyer for being silent on the violence attack on their ranks. Ayaw natin na ang response ay after the fact, yung meron ng pinatay o meron ng inattack na abogado, 
tsaka lamang may gagawin ng ating Korte Suprema. So, I think ang mahalaga, yung uh, prevention ng mga attacks na ito. The group again called for an order temporarily stopping the implementation of the Anti-Terrorism Act which they say can help deter continuing attacks against petitioners and their councils. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Police are looking into the possibility that the separate kidnappings of two policemen in Manila recently are connected. Leia Inagan tells us why. Manila Police District Director, Police Brigadier General Leo Francisco said they are conducting lifestyle checks on Police Corporal Alan Hilario and Patrolman Real Lopez Tesoro who were reportedly kidnapped by unidentified armed suspects days apart last month. Francisco says they are yet to determine the suspect's motive for the kidnapping. The MPD has formed a special investigation task group to focus on the case. It is being headed by the Deputy Director for Operation of the MPD. On board are the PNP Crime Lab, PNP CIDG, and other intelligence unit. We are receiving uh, so many information regarding uh, the background of Police Corporal Alan Hilario, and it is now being validated. As for the abduction of Tesoro, Francisco says, the authorities are continuously coordinating with his family if in case the captors contacted them. Eight personnel, specifically led by the station commander. And until now, there is no call or any communication by the abductors and to towards the family. Hilario was reportedly kidnapped by at least a dozen armed men on February 19 in Binondo. Tesoro, who has been placed on floating status at the Regional Police Holding Center at the National Capital Region Police Office at Camp Bagong Diwa in Taguig, was forcibly taken by five armed men in Santa Mesa last February 24. Hilario and Tesoro remain missing. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Unlike the expected arrival of the Moderna vaccines at the end of May or early June this year, Johnson & Johnson has yet to announce its commitment to when the American-branded vaccines from Janssen Pharmaceutical Company will be delivered to the Philippines. Marvin Calas explains why. America-based Johnson & Johnson's priority right now is to meet the demands for vaccine in the United States of America. Though the Philippine ambassador to the United States, Jose Manuel Romualdez, says that J&J &J has committed 6 million doses of its vaccines to the Philippines. Hindi sila makukumit pa kung kailan nila madideliver dahil uh, yun nga, ang priority ay yung demand muna dito sa America. Okay. Which is really... I suppose it's understandable dahil gawa dito mm -hmm. at uh, they need to vaccinate at least 70% of uh, Americans here in the United States. Meanwhile, the Philippine Food and Drugs Administration has not released the emergency use authorization for Johnson & Johnson. Based on a research in the United States, the single-dose J&J vaccine has a 72% efficacy rate and can be used on individuals 18 years old and above. And compared with other vaccine brands, it can be stored at normal refrigeration temperatures within three months. It is suitable for use in non-medical sites, especially in rural areas or in hard-to-reach locations. Ambassador Romualdez ensures that pharmaceutical companies are doubling their production to make COVID-19 vaccines available as soon as possible. The supply that they need will be completed by the end of May. Mm -hmm. and, but the production will continue for, uh, for uh, lalo na itong pinakabagong lumalabas na yung Johnson & Johnson na one, uh, one job. No? Lahat yan uh, will be made available to, uh, to the world uh, which uh, everybody agrees. Marvin Calas, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. 
A team from the World Health Organization investigating the origins of COVID-19 is planning to scrap an interim report regarding its recent mission to China. Mariela Toza will tell us why. In an open letter, a group of 26 scientists called for a new international inquiry to investigate the origins of COVID-19, according to a report from the Wall Street Journal. Scientists say the WHO team that completed a mission to Wuhan last month had insufficient access to adequately investigate the possible sources of the new coronavirus due to COVID-19 restrictions. On February 12, WHO Director General Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus mentioned that the team would release an interim report that briefly summarizes the Wuhan mission. However, the WHO team is now scraping that plan, according to Dr. Peter Ben Emberich, who is the food safety scientist that led the team. Instead, the team will publish the full and final report with a summary of its findings, the newspaper said, quoting a WHO spokesman. This broader report will be published in the coming weeks and will include key findings, it quoted the spokesman as saying. Mariella Toza, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The United States of America has blocked the attempt of Myanmar coup leaders to move 1 billion US dollars from the New York federal account. Joselito Liquido reports. The military rulers of Myanmar attempted to move about 1 billion US dollars held at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. This, days after they took over the power on February the 1st. Hence, U.S. officials put a freeze on the funds. U.S. President Joe Biden has allowed to block the transfer indefinitely after the transaction was blocked by federal safeguards and U.S. government officials stalled on approving the transfer. Fresh sanctions have been issued by the United States, Canada, the European Union, and Britain following the violent crackdown on opponents of Myanmar's military coup. While the United Nations human rights investigator on Myanmar, Thomas Andrews, urged the UN Security Council to impose a global arms embargo and targeted economic sanctions on the military rulers. The military in Myanmar has murdered, beaten, and unlawfully arrested protesters since it seized power, he added. Osilito Likido, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Italy has blocked a shipment of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine destined for Australia amid a row over contract commitments between the pharmaceutical company and the European Union. From Australia, Marvi Delfin will tell us why live. Yes, Marvi, good evening. Muriel, the government of newly appointed Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi has refused the export authorization for 250,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine headed for Australia from its manufacturing plant near Rome, and this decision was supported by the European Commission. Italy's foreign ministry explained the move was made because Australia was not vulnerable due to the low number of COVID-19 cases in the country and the shortage of vaccines in Italy and member states in the European Union. While seeking for a review of the intervention from the European Commission, Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison said he could understand the reasons for Italy's objection. This is the first time Europe has stopped a vaccine shipment on a non-EU country after it tightened its rules on vaccine exports, which started on January 30 in an effort to secure its own supply. However, Australia's Health Minister Greg Hunt stressed that the halting of the consignment would not drastically impact the next phase of the National Immunization Program, which launched two weeks ago, and that Australia is well prepared to handle the disruption. Australia has secured 43.8 million doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, of which 3.8 million will be manufactured overseas. The remaining 50 million doses will be made locally by medical giant CSL. Muriel? All right, Marvi, thank you for that report live from Australia. Meanwhile, Sarawak, Malaysia has opened its doors to workers from other countries. Sierra Yambao will tell us why. 
foreign workers are now allowed to enter Sarawak, Malaysia, provided they adhere to the strict SOP to prevent the spread of COVID-19, according to the State Disaster Management Committee Chairman Datuk Amar Douglas Uga Embas. The workers must get tested from their home countries three days before departing. Upon arrival, the employer is responsible in picking them up from the point of entry and bringing them to a place of quarantine approved by the State Health Department and bear the cost of testing on the second and tenth day. The reopening of the state was decided due to the requests from the industries that require foreign workers in sectors of agriculture, plantation, construction, manufacturing, and services. The chairman added, the State Localization Committee has approved a total of 27,000 applications for foreign workers. Sherry Bao, UNTV News and Rescue, Malaysia. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Food waste, a concerning issue, still continues to grow with 923 million tons of food thrown away each year. How can we reduce it? Early Be Honest reports. Food is a significant part of everyday life, hence why food waste is largely produced. In a report by the UN and RAP, a sustainability charity, it was recorded with the food waste index created by the UN Environment Program that in food markets, houses, and restaurants, all of which makes up available food. 17% of food is thrown away in rubbish bins. Waste in homes makes 60% of that percentage. In a year, 923 million tons of food waste is produced. This amount, quoted by Richard Swannell, the RAP Development Director, is equivalent to 23 million 40-ton trucks, which is able to circle the Earth by seven times. This was much bigger than previously estimated. It was expected that in richer countries, larger quantities of both edible and inedible aspects of food items like bones and shells were wasted. They found less edible wastage in poorer countries. Swannell goes on to say that food scraps is a major contribution to greenhouse gases emitted, being 8-10% to of emissions. Fortunately, reduction in waste was seen during the lockdown period. To reduce food waste, portion meals and only purchase the amount of food needed. Always be mindful of appropriate serving sizes. Maintain cool temperatures in refrigerators. Ensure that use by date and best before date is understood. When the use-by date is nearing, freezing the food item will preserve it. When the date has passed, the food is not safe to eat, whereas the best before date is for freshness and quality. Early Briones, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The world's first space hotel is set to begin its construction in low Earth orbit in 2026, complete with restaurants, cinemas, and rooms for up to 400 guests. Mary Jo Maleriado has this story. Going on a vacation in space could become a reality with the construction of what would be the world's first space hotel set to begin in 2026. The hotel, which will be called Voyager Station, is set to be built by Orbital Assembly Corporation with a futuristic concept compromising of 24 modules connected by elevator shafts that make up a rotating wheel orbiting the Earth. The renderings of the hotel suggest that it will look similar to a luxury hotel on Earth, except with some spectacular out-of-this-world views. Senior design architect at Orbital Assembly Corporation, Tim Alatore, said the hotel's aesthetic was the opposite of the Stanley Kubrick movie 2001 A Space Odyssey, which highlighted a divide between technology and humanity by making the stations and ships appear sterile and alien, calling it a blueprint of what not to do. Alatore and his team plan to bring a slice of Earth to space through suites, chic bars and restaurants, wherein they also plan to serve traditional space food like freeze-dried ice cream so guests can enjoy the novelty of being in space. There will also be recreational activities, an offer to take advantage of the weightlessness and reduced gravity, allowing guests to jump higher, lift things and be able to run in ways they can't on Earth.
While room rates at the Space Hotel are expected to come with a hefty price tag, the team behind Voyager Station said they are hoping to make stay at the hotel equivalent to a trip on a cruise or a trip to Disneyland. Mary Jo Maleriado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And uh, those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on the right side of your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. I am Maria Latoza, live from Perth, Australia. It's behind the news, March 5, 2021. I am Harry Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold among Locas for the third. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.